Well, it sounds like we've begun. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this is the first thing. Uh, the last time we went through the middle way memory matrix ritual. Mm -hmm. And I have in mind first to get any reports from you and then to teach you the procedures that I call the setup is one and the lightning bolt is the other. Oh, yes. Okay. And right. the, pur the purpose of the setup is to firm up the item on which you'll be working so that it's like setting up a rack of bowling pins, I suppose, so that they can be knocked down. And that's just the basics of what I have in mind for today. Mm -hmm. And is there anything you have to ask or tell about last time? Well, yeah, there is. Um, uh, first of all, we've been very bad students. We haven't. Oh, practiced. good, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but that's all right. You said it worked anyway, so we were encouraged by that. No. Anyway, <laughs> no. Uh, but in any event, uh, we were discussing this earlier and just realized that we've reached. I think we. I can speak for you here, as you, well. You speak for you, okay. and I speak for right. myself. That I have uh, reached a kind of flatness. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there there was a kind of real enthusiasm and high. Uh, and I attributed that to uh, the procedures uh, working and uh, making some real uh, progress on, on, on my own understanding of of how I view the world and uh, how the world is affecting me differently now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the past two, three days, I got to a plateau, and today I just kind of went through the day almost uh, f just flat and sort of emotionless and not able to be terribly enthusiastic or optimistic or anything remarkable at all. And uh, I, I'd somehow like to attribute that as, as, a, as a some kind of integration or uh, reaction uh, to the process to the processes we've been going through with you, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. but okay. Uh, I am. okay. Well, does the word equanimity fit? Well, you know, it's it's a little less than equanimity. It's it's a kind of a, it's almost a blah, you know, <laughs> which I wouldn't call equanimity. Okay. Yeah. So that would be something that you could run the procedure on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the blah? Mm -hmm. yeah. And for me, it is I had done the be more comfortable with challenges. And on Monday, I got a letter from the tribunale, what is it? Court. From the court that they condemned me to pay back a part of uh, what they have uh, paid to me and that they think it is not right. And I had already done a procedure. Um, a verification that it was right, but still I got the sentence. And I was sort of, well, okay, I was not touched emotionally as I normally am. And so I think this was um, a success in that thing. Mm -hmm. But I am experiencing the last few days uh, increasing Irrequietude, in quietness. Un unquietness. Uh -huh. Unquietness, um, not really knowing what I need to do. I have a lot of projects. Which one do I continue? When I try to do things like I did today again, hoping that it would work to publish my iBook, again they said there is an error and gave me the error message, which I have no idea what that means. Mm. And so I feel immediately <laughs> again, you know. So this is, let's say, the, the situation of the last few days that I feel uh, helpless because I don't see, um, even if I Google the things, there is no real support in it. And I, I don't understand these things. And, um, but it's not only that. It's, it's sort of um, 
dimming down my engagement, my wanting to go further because I want to prepare other books. But as long as I don't really succeed to, 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 to manage that one really well, I'm sort of playing and I should do that and I should do that, should do that, but I don't get into the into the mood of really doing it. So I feel a little bit I could call that stress, but it's not really stress. It's more this, you know, this uh, uneasiness, let's say. And uh, there's also a fear in between, which, you know, all the old things come up. The fear of not making enough money, of, 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 of dying <laughs> in, in a, in a, somewhere, you know, with uh, no support and not succeeding, maybe uh, selling the house. or uh, All these things come up, you know, all these negative things, which normally I sort of can manage with, um, with trust. You know, and now they are coming ever more, and I really realize that that I'm not in the state which I often normally are. Am. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really strange. It's an in, 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 I don't even succeed to do meditation because I'm sort of all over the place. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my present state of. Mm -hmm. And I uh, attribute it too as a sort of necessary, probably necessary moment in, in, a, in a process. That's at least in the past I saw it when I did long-term long transformation processes that there was a time when this sort of, of seemingly step back or fall back happens. So I don't know what you, what you think about it. You know, I've seen something similar in recent times, I hit a lot of stops, I call them, that would not let me go further. And I took that as an opportunity to change life strategy from being driven to get the intended result relentlessly to giving things time to ripen. There's, yeah. a, there's a saying in the Tao Te Ching, let life ripen and then fall. Force is not the way at all. <laughs> so that seems to have been working out pretty well, actually. Even the long-term unresolved situations, they do or have been resolving. I don't like having pending things. I don't like having backlog of incompletions. One of the things that I've cultivated in myself in earlier life was getting completions, finishing things before starting something new. And I think it's good grooming to do that, but sometimes the things don't let you finish them. So I just walk away and I come back to it later when I feel refreshed again. So that's what I would have to say about that. Yeah, it's a good tactic. You know, what What you say, This, I think it is... But still, there are sometimes these doubts. If I let life do, you know, in, in its own way, in the slow way, maybe I don't have enough time. Then I don't know if you relate to that. So these 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 um, contrasting voices inside, who seem to be at the moment almost the same, have the same power. Equivocal. Okay. At the moment, mm -hmm. yeah, sort of. Mm -hmm. So if you've got two contrasting voices, you've got two items to run through mm -hmm. the middle way memory matrix ritual. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered once again yesterday is the way out is never what we think it is. <laughs> well, actually, that's good. <laughs> And it doesn't mean that there's some other thing that's the way out. Not that either. It's none of them is the way out. The way out is always the dissolution of the pairs of opposites. Always the dissolution of either partial position. And that drops us into a 
uh, free state in which something altogether new can emerge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that my sense. comment on that bit. Uh, as far as you're having these projects and not really being enthusiastic for them while this iBook problem is in place, maybe this call is the opportunity to take any one of those projects and run them through the lightning bolt procedure. Okay. I have and several. You, know, you get a smorgasbord, you get to choose. And I suspect that any one you choose will contain common obstructions in the others, including possibly the iBook that you have had an inexplicable error message for. That if you take any project and get a successful outcome with a lightning bolt, it will have covered the problems underneath the other situations. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, with thinking about <coughs> contrasting items for, for me to work on, uh, we're talking about the blahs, perhaps, versus uh, enthusiasm, something like that. Uh-huh. And uh, see where we go with that today. Okay. Well, that would be if we do a memory matrix ritual, which we could do. But if we're going to do lightning bolt, there are two much shorter procedures. Okay. And it would be an exposure to you of these other additional procedures, each of which has their function, even though they're using the same elements of the Tetra seed. Okay. <clears throat> I'm ready to. Well, I'm ready. See what uh, comes up. Absolutely. Sure. Um, let's go ahead with what you would recommend. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> what you do is let me know when you have one item that you're choosing to work with. One. Yeah, just one. Okay. okay. So I do another one which is far behind and it's, it's haunting me for six months. Oh, good. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you got yours, Mark? Okay. I I guess then I'm going to work uh, on 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 the blahs. Yeah. The blahs. Yeah. Well, it, it'll work for that. But the thing is, uh, in using the lightning bolt, you have in mind a goal or outcome that you're creating. Yes, I do. It's okay. a you want to write it down? So you right. an outcome. Okay. The blahs. What does it the mean? Outcome the main? means the flatness. Ah, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. the, and and the outcome would be. I was going to say insight into the blahs, but no, that's I don't want to do that. I really, not worried about insight into them, but uh, um, a moving. Where are the blahs in the process? <laughs> What's the that, that won't get you where you need to go. That will just get you to understanding, perhaps. Okay. But not so no. Choose an outcome that you want to be left with. Okay. Maybe energized or something? Uh, then, or well, that's, wanting to do it? That sounds like a, a, an opposite. Uh, blahs moving to energy. Okay. Okay. That's where I want to get some energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'll be just stepping you through stepwise and you signal in some way when you're ready for the next. Okay. And uh, let me know when you're ready to begin. I am. Mm-hmm. All right. So put your attention on, on your chosen item. In, attend to remembering it. Remember imagining it. Imagine attending to it.
attend to intending it. Intend imagining it. Imagine remembering it. Remember intending it. Intend attending to it. That should have firmed it up. Now we go into the lightning bolt. So attend to it. Call up your remembrance of it. Everything about it. Imagine where it might go. Recall your remembrance of it. Now imagine the way you'd like it to go. Remember what you just got. What I just got? In imagining the way you'd like it to go. Now imagine the way you'd like it to go. Okay. Now intend that. Now, if it isn't just the way you'd like it, call up your remembrance of that. Imagine how that might go. and call up your remembrance of that. Okay. Now imagine how you'd like it to go. Now remember that. Mm -hmm. 
and imagine how you'd like it to go. And intend that. Okay, let's check in here. <laughs> How'd you that go for you? You caught me. <laughs> <laughs> Pedagogical tricks here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the first time you wanted us to what might how it might go, no? Yeah. As a good Enya type four person, I immediately saw the non success. Uh -huh. then I, admonished myself to switch into a more positive outcome. Mm -hmm. And then it went ever better when you have reinforced that mm -hmm. you know, all the time. And then the last thing was again the trick, now intent to, to do it or so. Mm -hmm. There I saw the voice which said, oh, <laughs> uh, shall I really intend that? <laughs> what does it imply if I intend that? <laughs> And I was I was chuckling about that, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So now I'll explain a little bit about the underpinnings of this. Okay. If it isn't happening, there's bound to be internal conflict about it. So when you go remembrance, all of the stuff is going internal conflicts and the desire are going to come up. Yeah. When you imagine how it might go, troubles might come up. You go back to remembering the troubles. You remember what came up. Then you're switching to imagine how you would like it to go. And there may be some drag, some back pull to imagining it. So you include that in your remembrance. And then you imagine how you'd like it to go again. And it became always more um, tangible. Mm -hmm. Before it was only the facts, <clears throat> how I would like uh, me to be and other people to be. And then at the end, it was more in the feeling uh, area. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll notice in the last, imagine how you'd like it to go, whether or not it feels like uh, an outcome that you can really get behind with your intention. Mm -hmm. If it's not really accurate to your intention, you're not going to be able to put wholeheartedly your intention behind it. So you go back to the beginning, include that in your remembrance, Imagine how it might go, remember, then intend how you'd like it to go, remember whatever comes up, and intend again. That alternation, that zigzag, one, two, three, one, two, three, and that back and forth reveals and dissolves the interferences and misalignments. So that each time you cycle through, you get closer to the mark. I took you through the cycles twice. In practice, when you do it by yourself, you can keep going between remember, imagine, remember, imagine, remember, imagine, until you've got it aligned to the where you want it. At that point, you've built up enough charge that if you just intend, you're launching it like a lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. I, I had a similar experience. I think maybe a little simpler, but the yeah. same forces were were playing with me, yes. and, uh, and and I ended up in a quite positive, you know, optimistic mm -hmm. space. You know, oh, I, I I can look at this, or I can look at that, and I, I can I, as as the process continued, I forgot about. <clears throat> uh, the negative possibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it became a, became a, 
an uplifting experience. I'm a new man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, really, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but it was just uh, really a, uh, oh, a, a clearing, you know, it's a rising up, uh, an evaporation, <laughs> yeah. uh, rather, of, of the uh, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. that's the lightning bolt. I, I gave you a little bit of the background so you know. Uh, a little better about intending and remembering yeah. those uh, potentials, so potential outcomes. Mm -hmm. So if you find in the intend step that your intention is not very strong, that means your alignment is either not very good or you still have interference, noise surrounding the intended outcome. In which case, you go back to the lightning bolt, beginning, and zigzag through until you get enough alignment and clear signal that you can launch your intention powerfully without internal jag, a drag or rebound. So I feel like that could help you on your way in getting projects done. Yeah, and for me, it just now came the opening in my mind that this, in the area what I'm doing, yeah, we work with intentions, but as long as we haven't done that, the intentions are not strong enough, or they are sort of more outside, you know? They are more mental yes. and not, not real. So this, this can help a lot when it clears that up. Just came to me, you know. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's true. For me, these these mm -hmm. two pract um, modalities are completely integrating. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I will this one this time. I promise you, in some way, I will practice that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right then. I've already been seeing a transformation in your presence online. I saw a video you did, which was your introduction to the Wisdom Factory. And I felt a liveliness that seemed new to me. Uh huh. The not last through, not through effort trying to be full of motion, yeah. but just the energetic presence of ah. you two. I noticed that. Well, wonderful. Thank That's you nice. for the feedback because yeah. I don't I don't realize that. I only realize that when you think about the first season, we were still so much tight. So. I mean, we did it well, in my opinion, no, for what we could do. But I feel much more comfortable now, much more, you know. That. Sometimes I, I'm a little tongue-tied because the words don't come out, <laughs> you know. But um, that's not because uh, I'm too slow, but it's sometimes really that I'm sort of looking for the words and they don't come. Uh, or maybe in another language, but not in the language I just need. So this is still what I feel as an inhibition. But generally, uh, I, I feel I feel quite comfortable with yeah. that, and also with Mark, who at the beginning I didn't trust so much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I really think I can trust you a little more in doing the right things. <laughs> A little more. No, because we have found this uh, this way of being together. Before yeah, yeah. you were staring into the text and reading, you know, and even mm. forgot, forget welcome, to say welcome, <laughs> things like that, you know. And now you are more, you are doing more this interaction piece, you know. We are, definitely. And I, it feels good. Mm. Anyway, thank you. That's nice to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Glad you noticed. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Now, um, just maybe a few words on the the setup. As you might know, this is uh, half of the sequence that we've gone through before, where you did uh, attend to, remembering, remember, imagining, imagine, attending, and then in reverse, attend to, imagining, imagine, yeah. remembering, remembering, attending. I uh, found that that procedure is best used in the middle way memory matrix ritual, the longer one, mm -hmm. at the end of it, 
because it aids both making it conscious and dissolving it. Whereas the version I took you through this time, where we did only one direction, sets up the awareness of the condition with which we're working without dissolving it. So it just sets it up. And mm -hmm. it shows us all of the resistance that we may have in the midst of it. And it shows us where the resistance is. And we don't need to squelch those. We want to bring those up so that when we run a procedure, it's been made visible to us. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So, yeah. so I like it because it's half the work. And it's more specialized to the purpose to which we're applying it at the beginning of any procedure. Okay. So you could yeah. use this in front of a gold key release, in front of the memory matrix ritual, in front of the lightning bolt. And in fact, you can use the setup in front of anything to prepare yourself. It's a, a more thoroughgoing way of approaching it. I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary to do before any of the procedures, but I think it's helpful, and I think it may speed getting the results, even speeding the process of those procedures themselves, making them go faster. Because sometimes we have to wait for something to surface, right, at a given step. Yes. And I think it will speed the surfacing. Yes, and it will reinforce uh, the positiveness. You know, because mm. you have um, touched the negative part, the inhibition part, and this was. Mm -hmm. but then you have reinforced the positive way and you have opened up the, the street for it to go there. Mm -hmm. I mean the positive intention, the positive outcome, let's say. And then it is easier to, to put the intention on it and then mm -hmm. you can see how far you are really intending it. Yeah. And as you said, then reinforcing again and again, I can imagine, we haven't done that, but I can imagine that it will at the end be a more pure intention possible, you know? Mm -hmm. And somehow the blocks to the intention were removed. So that yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't feel it completely removed, but I realized it, you know, mm -hmm. I realized the, the, the negative voice saying, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I didn't fool myself that I really do intend it 100%. I don't yet, you know? Yeah, that's the thing. So it shows us the hidden misalignments in ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. I knew it before that there is something, and I know also where it is uh, grounded, these things, you know, in, in fear of not being good enough and not getting it and, and not, not, not wanting to work so hard and all this stuff, you know? And whenever, I'm a little bit like you in this sense, uh, but I don't show it. I'm going to remember this. I don't show it so much, <laughs> but, uh, because I always fear that, oh, there's so much, so much to do, and then, oh, it will overwhelm me. And uh, when I then go through the things, it's quite sort of easy, you know, and often I have even spare time because I get it, but I have this uh, thing that I want to have everything prepared before, two days before, so... Uh, I know that, so, <laughs> and I think this um, missing 100% intention is because of that, because it's this voice who says, oh, if you don't have it, so, they are still talking, but yeah. not so much. Yeah. Well, well, they, will, <coughs> they will be the grounds for procrastination, those mm -hmm. negative voices and thereby slow things down, just as we were afraid they would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a fulfilling prophecy. And yeah. I know that. And, and the Enneagram people would say, that's your four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The four is more the, the, the seeing the negative part, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the, the slowing down. Slowing down would be more the sex yeah. of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So I'll share the 
memory matrix ritual I did this morning. Mm -hmm. okay. The two items were curiosity and caution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> it's the thing with the apprentice. Uh, how, how is it called? The, the metric apprentice? Oh, the the uh, sorcerer's apprentice. Sorcerer's apprentice, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. <laughs> These things are so pervasive. Curiosity and caution, mm -hmm. for example. See it in our cats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be something to run early on in any new involvement. Uh huh. Good. Mm -hmm. There's a growing list right now of pairs mm -hmm. of related attributes, which I'm recording. I expect to use them mm -hmm. in an ongoing, say, weekly hangout series where everybody okay. runs two items in a single procedure and that's it and the next time will be another two items and we're arriving at some very interesting if not core close to core aspects mm -hmm. be very interesting to take we can take a group through the list as it's developing it'd be a gigantic cleanup for people <laughs> Well, that's what we need, a good cleanup. We've already grown up, you know, and, and, and we've, of course, wakened up. And, I see. Uh, <laughs> After the nap, we woke up, at least. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, right. This is very exciting. It's, it's just a, you know, I've, I've never run across uh, this kind of approach before, and it's just, uh, mm -hmm. oh, it's just opening up reality and... Cracking, cracking me open in new ways. Quite wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I already tried to to tell people about the Germans, but uh, was not yet really a big success. I had translated only the Gold Key release in in German. Mm -hmm. He t he wanted to have the paper, uh, but he didn't come back to me. So I don't think he would understand it. But I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I hope to, to, to meet this person again to have a talk because I had to go early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's my thought that it's a, a good thing to do with any new client, very first thing. Mm -hmm. I've had some clients coming to me in the past couple of weeks from, for intensives, which lasted either three or five days. I just finished a five day with someone. And when working with someone, the unconscious drag that they have in entering into new, any new procedure would probably be good to clean up before you get into the procedure, whatever it may be, coaching or whatever. And then I've been doing it also the last thing that we've done before they go back home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm as a cleanup of residue of things that didn't get handled during the intensive. I had to, it was something that we could not get to change in this one person. We got a ton done, but there were you know, a couple of things that were still residue. So we then clean up the emotional aftermath so that when they work by themselves, they're working in a clearer space. Mm -hmm. And you did what for that? Uh, I took them through gold key release and the, the memory matrix ritual, the first person who was two weeks ago, at the end. But at the beginning, I had them do gold key release on their beliefs about their condition. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, this one fellow had gotten all these changes, and he was still talking as if he's got this problem. But it's it's <laughs> gone, you know. But he was thinking as if he was still in that condition. So I said, "Well, we're going to have to do gold key release on this to clear it." 
This is a phenomenon no? that you it is so difficult to, to change the thoughts, even if the facts are already gone, but the thoughts yeah. seem to be, the belief system yeah. seems to be really to, to lag behind. Yeah. yeah, that's right. They don't really believe they've changed, even though they can feel it, even though I can see it. Tom Hanna told us that in his experience there were some people it was a full year before they actually recognized what had changed in them. It's rarely that for me. Usually, of course, it's very quick. But occasionally you get a person who's particularly dense and they still have the belief that they have the problem even when it's gone. <laughs> so the content has changed, but the structure remains. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna wipe that out. It's an empty bottle. <laughs> yeah. But a bottle. <laughs> bong bong. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, is there anything more from your side? Oh, only that I enjoyed doing that with you and yes. getting to know all that. Uh -huh. And it was so short. It's nice. <laughs> The memory makes a ritual. That's a massive piece of work, but it's a very yeah. power, powerful no. procedure. You know, I tell you, I was completely tired afterwards. I was yeah. like, like knocked out, yeah. like, yeah. And my head was like, like that, you know, <laughs> all the time. And I brought that memory tonight with me. You know, oh, you um, thought it would be today? Oh boy, we were, we're going, fearful. not no, that we'd be doing that again, but we'd be doing something heavy and deep and tiring and hard work. And doggone it, Lawrence, this, this wasn't hard. No. Okay. You'll see? Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, the memory matrix ritual contains a number of what I call rites, R-I-T-E-S, which are the elements of the long ritual. And when, when you're running that, if you're finding you're getting tired or you're feeling used up, you just quit there. You may come back to it. If you were to start from the beginning, you would find it was much easier and move much more quickly to get to later rights of it that you have not yet done. Mm -hmm. And it's an experimental thing because that memory matrix ritual is exceedingly powerful. And I have yet to do just little bits of it. I drive through to the end mm -hmm. because the issues I've been working with, I've had a certain urgency about getting free of those issues. But recently there was one where I stopped. I let myself stop at the end of one of the rites. And it would be interesting to see the effect of just doing the earlier parts of that memory matrix ritual on outcomes at the life level, an experiment. So what did you see that it already worked? Well, what's happening in me is I'm shifting. I'm losing a lot of the well, a heaviness I get might be the, the way of saying it. And these are cleanup efforts that I'm doing in myself. So what's happening is I'm just uh, becoming more and more even, more and more even tempered mm -hmm. as we go through this. Mm -hmm. I, I have run the lightning bolt on a couple of things. And one of them, I saw that I didn't have a clear space at the end, and so I didn't really expect to see an outcome because I didn't have a clear felt sense of the outcome along the lines Heidi said earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't have a report on doing the earlier rites of the memory matrix ritual by themselves as to what their effects are. You just use those two terms again, rites and ritual. Right. And this is uh, making me kind of reframe what we're doing in, in a kind of more archetypical typical way, if I can say that, uh, um, uh, moving uh, in, in a good way to a kind of magical realm where we exercise all of the uh, all of the conflicts within us. You know, mm -hmm. a, a real uh, a, a priestly duty that you're doing in some ways. You know, yeah. 
Yeah. It's, uh, it's really Which it really thing. is. You know, a ritual generally has several subparts to it. Mm -hmm. And correctly or incorrectly, I'm calling those subparts rites within the ritual. Yes. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah, that's what I was picking up on. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of a priestly function in a certain sort of way in that there is a set order to the steps and there is an expected outcome. Mm -hmm. Now only that, the memory matrix ritual is so large that it seems an act of mercy to refer to the subsections as rites so that person gets a sense of completion after mm -hmm. finishing any one of them and a grand sense of completion after having done the whole ritual through. Mm -hmm. My sense is that many people will not be able to do the ritual from beginning to end by themselves mm -hmm. and that it will be helpful for them to have someone coaching them step by step through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is because I have pretty solid intentionality but there are times where in the middle of that ritual I can't remember the next step. I have to stop and wait. I, it's like I'm getting launched into outer space and I have to come back to Earth again after a big round trip before I can do the next step because it is, I'm just so dissolved from what I've done just before that I can't even continue. And what about writing it down and reading it shortly? That I could do. I, I would have to, uh, yeah, write it down. I have it in the computer. I'd have to be in the computer room, which I don't want to be, actually. Mm -hmm. No, I did it on paper. When I did, when I did the gold key release at the beginning, and I couldn't remember, I had it written down. It's, it's not many, many yeah. lines. And then I opened the eyes and looked. Ah, okay, this, and then. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can do that. But I think at the beginning it's much better to be guided and I think your, your idea to, to creating that for groups, it's really a good idea. Yeah. To do it as a, as a course, you know. Or yeah. A, yeah. yeah I, it's going to be very interesting when yeah. I can do it as a, a Google Hangouts course because the only one who's gone through all of the material that I've identified so far is me. <laughs> when you get other people going through it every step, yeah. it's going to be very interesting to hear the kinds of transformations people go through. And maybe also um, writing down deeper research, no? To 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 keep the the records of what is happening and to mm -hmm. to study how 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 it's how it's working. Sure. Yeah. yeah. A diary. Psychological stu study or yeah, something study, like that. Sure, yeah. Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing a study on it. That's, that, I'd have to ponder that some because the subject matter that the people are working on will be so diverse sure. that the kinds of changes they go through will, I expect, be unique according to the item on which they're working. So it would have to be some sort of a meta level. I'm not even sure how it would be constructed. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Mm -hmm. So if people are just running it and they're getting results, they'll be able to attest to the results to people they know personally without having to have a big study behind it. But yeah, I don't know. That's something that... I don't have to sit with that notion of doing a study around these. It must not be a study, you know, in the not sense of not an of academic, not a net necessarily an academic study, but uh, collecting the data and to see uh, how what sort of changes appear, with what sort of I think we can make uh, well, categories sure. with which sort of uh, kind problems, of what kind of patterns emerge. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that could people. be done. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, there's a thought you put into my mind. Oh, good. All right. <laughs> Maybe that's why we are here. It could be. It could be.
It all promised to be very interesting. So far, as I say, the overwhelmingly effective with people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's more important than the study, actually. Yeah, it is. Yes. But you know, all these things which are a little bit new, it's uh, so easy to, to, with people who have never gone through, to reduce them as woo-woo. And when you have a, a little bit more clear written things, mm -hmm. it might be easier to, to I, I don't even want to say get into mainstream because... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> but at least be recognized as a procedure. Yeah. And I think it, it really really needs to be mm -hmm. to be. Well, we're happy to do what we can to uh, spread the word too, of course. Yeah, yeah, no, no, very yeah, but no. we were, <laughs> but we're a little voice anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it all starts small. Mm -hmm. Don't start with one person. Yeah, and now you you have two. Us. <laughs> yeah, we got that's well. Us. That's, among the us, there's the three of us. There are the people in different courses that I've taken through individually, and there are the clients of uh -huh. mine that I've been taking through it. So, the first instances were separated by months, one person each, and now it seems to be accelerating to have larger period, numbers of people in shorter periods of time. And as oh, I think I mentioned, I'd like to see 100,000 people on a single call. Yeah. And then who knows where that could lead. But 100,000 is not even very much in this, this, the world scale. Mm -hmm. No, uh, this is reachable, but not next week. Not next week. Soon. That but needs some more. Sooner some than more, you think. Yeah. I'm reminded of... Uh, when it goes viral, <coughs> if we can, for instance, uh, also Martin or these people who are, have a big following, when we can um, bring them into the uh, knowledge of that and when they approve it, they have, uh, you know, much more when you when you go to influencers and they, they support you. Influencers. Yeah. They support you and bring you out. It can be very quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Ken Wilber's Cosmic Grooves, you know. Yes, of course. We're just laying down little scratches on the surface now. But as more people walk those grooves, they become canyons yeah. <laughs> eventually. And it's just a whole route that evolution takes. And everyone who comes afterwards can easily follow that route. As a matter of fact, I had difficulty not following it. And there you have it. Pretty soon we'll transform the entire U.S. Congress. <laughs> oh, they'll come later. I'm sorry. I don't want to be a bunch. No, it's an interesting to see the uh, the presidential race is now underway. You know, and so all kinds of silliness will be happening. Mm -hmm. Most of which has nothing to do with any real issues. Mm. But you know, would you need to, uh, just a question, would you need to work with these people or is it enough that others work and the energy is spreading? Well, it's, I don't know how much is enough, but I do know from direct experience that when people run this procedure, the field changes, mm -hmm, the, yeah. the we space changes without mm -hmm all people having to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there, yeah. there is a somatic contagion that occurs. Yeah. But not everybody will have to run the procedure. They will probably get it from resonant influence from other people. But what remains to be seen, really, remains to be seen. How much it can be done behind the scenes and how much has to be done explicitly. Yeah. It could go either of two ways. It could go that the contagion, the field effect, prompts the transformation of people in the vicinity, but it also may be that the field effect hits up against their 
entrenched memory patterns and makes them react even worse against it. That's possible too. <clears throat> yeah. So it remains to be seen. This is so new we don't even know the potential of this. Well, I, I expect both reactions will happen, both the contagion and the resistance. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, all righty. Anything more for our present visit? Mm, no, no, that's fine. Yep. All I, right. would like, I would like, it, now it's on live, maybe when it's not live, talk to you about, about future. Mm -hmm. Well, let's terminate the broadcast part. Yeah. Okay.